Now, what's Krista doing? Is Krista in Wissahickon? No, she teaches in um, Springford. Springford. Oh. Where I'm at. Oh, so my sister graduated with with um Brianna and Charlotte. Yeah, my older sister. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And with Liz. So Liz, Liz my stepsister, yes. and my sister, they all were friends, which is how my stepdad met my mom was at prom. <laughs> Just still so weird to me, though. <laughs> It's weird to me. Not weird, <laughs> but, but in a good like, way. <laughs> it's been over twenty years, so which is, but I mean, like my stepdad. <laughs> yeah, my mom's been married since two thousand. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Wow! Seem like Damn. That's right. Which is weird because they were all together. Because I think Sean and Jason Brand was there, and Krista and Liz and everyone, and then Jason Brand. Yeah. I just Jason Brand. I just friended him on Facebook. He dated my stepsister for years. I remember right? he used to do all the musicals. He was one of the few guys that did musicals mm-hmm. during our time there. And he, I think he was uh, like one of the leads in You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. Yes, he was. <laughs> what year was that? What year that was, was 10th grade for us? When was Godspell? When was that time that you said you came to my That was freshman year. Freshman year, oh, J.C. Mm. Whitaker, right? I remember he was. <laughs> Did right. anyone else do musical theater or anything besides Brad? My brother. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My sister. That's what I was gonna say. It's like the uh, you... now. When did your your brother's name? Is it Eric? Mm-hmm. And when did he graduate? Ninety five. When we were sixth grade. Okay, and he did track too, right? Yeah. So I know you ran track. Mm-hmm. obviously when you went to Kent State and stuff like that I saw that yeah but, he graduated 95 my sister my sister graduated when we were in eighth grade 97 okay does, then, you, does your brother know how influential he was to me Jess uh yeah he listened to the podcast oh, <laughs> oh that's it <laughs> still he's uh, still doing I mean right now what does he do now he does uh, graphics for like a lot of TV shows now. So like he did the graphic oh. for the show Manifest, that new show that came out last year, Manifest. Oh yeah. Um, Is he like a like? Oh, I like that. Why didn't I keep watching? Well, the graphic design. So like for NBC or whatever, like they'll hit him up like, hey, we got this new show. There's a couple because everything's been on pause, obviously, but yeah. he's been working. He used to do the backdrops for the like the Tonight Show, like all the stuff you see, like the cutout. Oh, oh wow. So he, he that, that he does like five. I don't know. I can't keep up with him, but That's he did the stuff it. for uh, what's that show? Luke Cage, I think that uh, Netflix. on Netflix or so. Yeah. So he he does so much. Like most recently, it's uh, Manifest, and then there's another show. I can't I can't keep up with him. I'm so busy. Let me let me put, how do I put mute on my kids? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Is he in California? No, um, New York, in uh, Jersey, uh, North Jersey. He's uh, what is it? I can't think of the name. He's not too far from uh, Newark. Yeah, okay. In North, in North. My my oldest brother moved out here a few years ago. He's in North Hollywood, but the rest of everybody else is back there. Did you my make? My mom is in the. Where my mom? My mom lives in East North. My mom, my sister. Okay. And then my dad's back in Ambler. So. Did you happen to make it to Brandon Deese's drive-in? No, I I saw it that day and we had some stuff going on, but he said there'll be more. But it's that was like twenty minutes from me. I could have went. He wasn't there though. I know he wasn't there. It was like I guess his oh. partner, but uh the let Brent I mean we talk. I had a class, because uh, when I when I transferred to the academy, I had like a whole bunch of classes I had to take. I was down in LA for a class, we could we get a chance to meet up, but it's like they're so close, but you know, him and him and Hank Jones are so close, but I never see him. That's wild, yeah. Hank out there, man. Hank's Hank's doing big so time. many things. He's big time. He's big like time. a he's like a guy to brag about, you know. Yeah, like he because he's executive producer yeah, on many yeah. shows and and some movies and stuff too. So he's like, doing big oh, things. Oh, you watching Motown? Like I'll tell you, the the best was um uh the new edition biopic that he was script supervisor on on BET. That mm-hmm. was like because that was my childhood. I've forgotten how much I like loved and grew up on new edition. Yeah. So I was watching that and the steps and I was just like, Oh my God, I'm going <laughs> to see that. I was just like, I can't believe he was, that was like a, one of those like envious, like, Oh my God, that's something I would have loved to just been in the room for. Mm-hmm. 
so are you thinking that. about food because it's been almost an hour since you had those edibles oh my god i so before <laughs> we started this i was like do i have snacks what if i need a snack did they give you guys uh computers like they, they yeah. like loan out computers for the the business mm -hmm. learning yeah, yeah all of our sixth graders get computers for the whole till uh, every sixth grader gets a new chromebook for the next six years yeah and then they gave every kid one now anyway kelly yeah, my, my daughter got a tablet for kindergarten but the other the boys got uh chromebooks yeah we got ipads so would you guys let your kids have laptops normally like their own personal uh, laptop would you normally let them have one my, my kids, kids have, have a one. tablet they have a tablet but you know laptop <laughs> each each one of my kids have had a chromebook since Ava was in second grade when she got one. Because in North Penn, in our school, she's been using a Chromebook since first grade. So mm -hmm. they submit their assignments in school in a Chromebook anyway. Yeah, they use, they use Chromebooks at the school. But, like, like my, they know how to use the computer. Like, my older son, is he's actually good on computers. It just, he, we just got to work on his typing. But, hey, I wasn't going to buy it. Like, I was like, I'm not buying a laptop. So we're going to make sure we get it. <laughs> Well, because you can't find one. When I tried to buy a new one for well, myself, now. like a couple months ago, you can't. It's all sold out. Ever since this mess. Yeah, I noticed that when I went to Walmart the other day, I was like, "Where's my laptop?" There's nothing. Right? No Chromebooks. Nothing. They have them. I, we got ours from Target. And I'm sorry. I'm trying to fix my lights. Um, and they were great, but I took the ones from the school this year because they're touchscreen. I don't have like the fancy touchscreen ones. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, but, um, it's just like I look at it like I don't know having a TV like you know for for personal use now it's like almost having like a TV in your room which some parents don't allow or like having a cell phone for your kid now it's giving them access to the world without you being able to actually monitor it which is like a really weird side effect <clears throat> of all this now is that kids have their own laptops that you're you have to let them use because it is specifically for school but who knows outside of that what they're doing? Well, they can't. There's security if on ours. The security right, so is so the only intense. thing that you can do is like YouTube. You know but you I mean? can't like, even you look can't... at certain things on YouTube. Uh, like, for, yeah, like, you North can't Penn. even look at certain things on YouTube. Yep. They can't even email me they, they, through North Penn. But their right. own, like, so when they go into the North Penn desktop, they can't email me. They can't do anything. It's so, the security mm -hmm. on it. But on their personal ones, Ava YouTube something and she said to me, she goes, Mom, something inappropriate popped up, like a penis came up or something. And she was like, There's a penis on my screen. Can you come um get rid of it? And I was like, Yes. Oh. Um, but I'm fortunate because but that's when you gotta have that conversation like early. I like I have to say, like mm -hmm. Back. if you try and Google like pencil and you spell it wrong, you're gonna get a penis. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like, you're right. Be prepared. Yeah, right. <laughs> I remember White House dot com was a porn site. So when we were in high school, we would always be like, "Oh, oh no. I'm, I'm going to do some research uh, on government," and then you would type White House dot The front com. page was so blasphemous; you could never like <laughs> click. You never click right. deeper. You just had to right. laugh and then exit out real quick. Right. I didn't even know that. I know. I love that you guys know exactly what each other were talking about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was like the big, that and uh, was it rotten.com was the other big website that people love to go to in the library, which showed you like uh, morgue shots and like you could see Ugh. like Elvis and JFK and Tupac. That was like, know. That I was, didn't know that then, but I might go now after this. That was the company. Yeah, I know, right? What was that called? <laughs> I, I don't know why. That's how I knew Tupac was actually dead. That was my first so real call. So you were doing that, like, while we were, like, looking at the Dewey Decimal System and you were, like, looking at porn in the library? <laughs> I was studying somewhere. I know. <laughs> Dewey Decimal. <laughs> <laughs> hey Brad, I wanted to ask, how's the Italian market been through all this? Is it is it coming back to life now? Uh, I mean, it's, it's it was never closed. It always stayed open. Uh, the only thing that's wow. changed is like the non food because everyone was classified as a grocery. So right. the pasta uh, shop, the butcher, uh, uh, even, okay. even the bodega. Oh, it sense. smells like andouille sausage and onions and jalapenos and limes. Would they keep their food outside, though, too, still? So everything was outside still? 
Well, the, all the regular shops, like the, in, the indoor shops were all open, but the produce was open too. Outside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the one- Everybody had masks on. Not everyone, but most. <laughs> but like, uh. like, they don't wear them right. You know, some people wear them, yeah. some people don't. The workers wear them, but they don't wear them right. But the people in the stores are all pretty sh- are all pretty good, at least on this block. Like, and the butcher right by here, um, they do face shields and all that. So it took like you know a few. It took like a, a you know a few days, which happened to coincide kind of with like you know the with the protests and everything. Uh, but once well, you that had kind security. Of, what's that? Because you had security out there too, right? Yeah, I, had, I had armed security outside my place for a week. Uh, to protect the stores because they were worried that the that the storefronts were going to get broken into. Um, so, but like that was kind of happening all at the same time to where once that was all done, they were all pretty much open um, and selling and nothing was really changed. And now people are, it's, I mean, it's pretty crowded, pretty busy and they've all adapted to like no more than three to five people inside the store at a time. Wow. So it's just lines everywhere you go. Uh, for every shop, there's just people standing on the sidewalk waiting. Um, who was, on. Now, were people eating outside the other day? Because you said like you were playing music out the window and people were. <laughs> yeah, so that's like the, restaurants. Yeah, that's the that's the thing now for the last couple of months is sidewalk seating. But the places around here, there's a place across a Mexican restaurant that was um, just doing takeout. All the places have been doing takeout, but this place decided to start doing sidewalk seating, and they built an actual like platform um on in like the street where the parallel parking would be and so literally right outside my place are people just eating at tables like 15 <laughs> that's how i feel kelly 15 like, to sorry 20. i just started playing something on my phone by accident <laughs> uh, you're like making this face. I was, I was like, like, you're not like outside eating. <laughs> well, Brad, Brad, my um, my sister-in-law just moved to um, St. Albans between Seventh and Eighth, so like three blocks from you. Yeah. And so I was down there. She moved there not this past week, not this weekend, but the weekend before. And so I went down there yesterday, and uh, so I was like up by like uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, Cian Free Franny Park, something like that, and uh, and then like down to Christian Street, and uh, but I was, but like for her sake, I don't know like what what's going on down there. Is it fun right now? Is it getting back to life, or is it still kind of shut down? I mean, there's nothing fun. Yeah happening i mean the restaurants are open everything's open either for takeout or dining outside right here everything's open everything is like open but not indoor so right not, not for like- indoor but everything everyone's got seen i look they had people around the corner just right outside my door eating at a table um and all the str- and all the like shops are pretty uh, situated with like um delivery Mm-hmm. Uh, with Mercado service and a few other places. So butchers yeah. and all that. So people are making tons of, they're still doing tons of great business through takeout. Even the, the produce docks is up like 20, 30, 40 different orders uh, per day to send out oh. at like $25 per box at whatever the fuck they want to put in it. Um, just order the produce. Oh, really? Yeah. They fill up the produce box. You order it. It's $25. It gets <clears> out every morning. Honestly, that's what they're doing for our school program, too. Like, my mom will go and pick it up when I'm at work, and she brings home a 10-pound box of produce. But then they'll have, like, sometimes they have, like, canned sandwiches, and they'll have – well, Tara would probably say she does eat it. But, um, like, omelets <laughs> and egg sandwiches, and they're so – peanut butter and jelly – well, not real peanut butter, but, like, fake peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Um, pizza. Wait, what's – So much what's stuff. Fake- What's fig- That's crazy. I did not know they gave that much. Like, oh my god, it's so much food. Wait, so what much. is? I had no idea. I might go. I'm. I'll probably end up going. Yeah. That's Brad's so hungry now. He can't even. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I look at the face. I'm curious too. Well, what, I get what little like milk cartons too. <laughs> There's fake peanut butter. It's soy butter. Uh, and jelly. Oh. Like things. Oh, we because get- you can. Yes. Yeah, right. The jammer things that you like. They're like sealed sandwiches, and you like open it and just eat it. I don't even know. You don't have to make it. It's like a sealed, uncrustables. The crustables. Oh, PB&J. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're delicious. It's like sword <laughs> butter, peas and crackers and cereal. At, at WWE, they like go through t- 
tons of boxes of Uncrustables. They would have them in catering, and no one would really eat them. But when you have to drive to the next town after the show, that's a they great would, thing. Yeah, they would put out like they would put out like fifty boxes of Uncrustables and all the leftover perishable snacks would just sit out, and everyone would just grab boxes and boxes and take them in their rental cars and eat PB and J sandwiches all night long. So well, those are great because you can freeze them and then put them in like a lunchbox or like give them out, and then they defrost by the time you need to eat it. So exactly. it's frozen, kind of like like almost frozen PB and J is really good too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should write that one down. I don't know. Write that down. Yeah. Uh, lessons. Ryan, where where are you at? Collegeville. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm in Oaks. My my address is Collegeville, but uh, I'm actually in Oaks, like right on the other side of Phoenixville. Okay. Have you gone out in Phoenixville at all? Uh, not much oh, since all this, fun. but uh, it's actually been bumping a little bit, uh, like. I work uh, at really? Collegeville and Paoli. I work out there, and it's been like, I'm surprised. It's they're pretty yeah. popular. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> well, I used to go out to Phoenixville now? all the time. Like, yeah, yeah Phoenixville used to be like I, I didn't really know Phoenixville until I moved mm-hmm. out here, and it's it's crazy. It's awesome. It's, awesome. Uh, it's it like is, uh, it's uh, like one town. Really the fun. town is one street that's just bars and maybe like a bike shop. You know, <laughs> like yeah. and you, and you yeah. just have so much fun and yeah, the movie theater. Too um and uh so like i had my birthday party at bluebird distillery that place is oh, awesome yeah. uh i love it out there but um it's i've noticed like, brewery so yeah that's right rec room yeah and mm-hmm. uh and so i love it here but um yeah since since they shut everything down they still haven't really shut anything down you can still go and they still have they first friday they see yeah they still shut the streets down and you could just walk and go up to all the bars and all the bars have their outdoor stands you just get messed up in the street and yeah <laughs> It's That's crazy. the one benefit like, of, of COVID is that no one cares about public uh, public yeah, right. alcohol <laughs> consumption anymore. That's right. Like yeah. everyone's doing pouches and slurp and slushies uh, for to go drinks and neat straws and shit, and you can just drink wherever. <laughs> you say neat straws? Neat. <laughs> well, like you said, neat. But you might have just invented fun. something. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a straw made of uh, made of a slim jim. You can put that in a mark. Uh, what's it called? A Bloody Mary. Oh, oh, prosciutto straw. Prosciutto straw. Prosciutto. I used to make um, the what's it? The licorice straws in my soda. Yo, there's a spot. Uh, uh, that sounds Bac- delicious. Bacchanal wine, um, which is in like East Passion, yeah, a little bit souther from me, and souther. Yeah, and they've got like maybe <laughs> awesome lunches, but they would have a Bloody Mary and a mimosa bar, and I'd never seen that where like they had meat where you could put prosci- prosciutto in your Bloody Mary or whatever like Italian yeah. meat you wanted. Besides, like usually it's vegetables and all that, and that was all there, but like you could put like decadent meats inside your prosciutto inside your Bloody Mary drink. It actually doesn't sound bad. That's really good. <laughs> That's the shit I miss now is like no brunch. Yeah, I had brunch yeah. today. Oh, Brad, I remember when you used to go to brunch all the time. On like, You used to post all the time about going to brunch. <laughs> Me? You made it through, what a millennial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, used to- I used to be like, God, I want to do this. Like, I've never done that. I don't know why. Like, I've never actually gone to like a brunch place. Never? No, I, I don't know why. And I really wanted to. But by the time I wanted to do everything, everything, or I had to do everything, or had time to do everything, I mean, COVID came, and now I'm sitting here with me, I did all this stuff. (laughs) I know, I'm going to say Red Cedar, I'm a good brunch, I'm so good pap. I'm a brunch person. I eat brunch, I make brunch, like, my kids won't have breakfast, like, virtual learning. I just make food in the middle of the day, and, like, we brunch every day. I had brunch, I went to brunch today at someone's house, and then they taught me how to use the online school thing. So I brunch as much as possible. I My feel favorite. like brunch in the city is the best. And when I moved out of the city, that was the thing I missed the most was brunch. Yeah. Um, like, Susie, did, that did you so ever go to Gateway there. Cafe too? Did you ever hear of that? Yeah, no, you know what? It's not far from me. Um, yeah. I hear great things about it. And I pass yeah. by it sometimes on my way to work. If I yeah. go in the back roads, 
and I heard it's awesome. Yeah, well, when you're allowed inside a restaurant again, you should go there because uh, <laughs> it, it it's very like uh, uh-huh. uh, I don't know, like the stall. It's like it's like fifties in there. I don't know. It's like oh, a throwback cool. in time. It's so bizarre but it's like great breakfast food and uh it's just such a weird wonderful little place so oh yeah. cool i will i will totally check that out for- now did you used to live you used to live up here right yeah so uh i lived all right so after after high school i moved to willow grove then back to ambler then to north wales uh, is that when you worked at best when i saw you at best buy you saw me at Best Buy. Everybody saw me at Best Buy. Everyone saw me at Best Buy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, you were very helpful. Thank you. Uh, that, that, that period of my life is a blur. That was like the heavy drinking phase for me. Like, mm-hmm. It was bad. It was real bad. Did Best Buy do that to you? Yes. <laughs> yes. I well, imagine honestly, it would. Yeah. Retail is such a cesspool. Yeah, it's the worst. When you're like between like in your early 20s like 20 to 25 because yeah. the parties after work are so they're ridiculous and like half the, half the kids there go and everybody just gets completely rocked and it's just i mean it's great when you're when you're that young but like no now no, no, yeah, that's like, what i oh my god i missed no. that part during my 20s because i was having kids mm-hmm. from 23 to 28 so now i try yeah. and go out after work with kids who are younger and i'm like I'm it's I have free time I can do it I'm responsible and then I'm dead yeah. <laughs> like I can't recover which is really hard that That's part's hard. Like, I can't do shots. At, I mean, I can, but it's not for me. <laughs> Ryan, um, like, that's the part that you said, like, getting old sneaks up on you, because, like, th- there's there's none of that anymore. You can't, like, mm. drink, drink, my drink, ankle drink, uh, hurts. I have to pick if I'm drinking on Friday or Saturday. There's no, you're not <laughs> drinking on Friday and Saturday. And Saturday. That doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> that bounce back. Yeah, it takes day to recover now, for oh, sure. Yeah. Unless you're doing edible, standing out the car. Cyborg mode. Uh... <laughs> I went to uh, San Diego last January for my, my younger cousin's bachelorette party. I was like, I mean, she's probably, I think she's five or six years younger, but I was so, I felt like the old person in the bunch because I had like one of my cousins that was like 22 and I'm watching her. She trying to bring some dude back to the Airbnb. I was like, his ass is not, I'm like, I turned into mommy. I was like, his ass is not coming. Say goodbye. Like he was in the elevator with us. I'm like, say bye to your little friend. Like, it's like you push him out and then like hit the closed door button really quick. Yeah, because he was like, oh, why she hate? I said, look, I was like, I am not. I was, I was turning into like work and mommy mode. I was like, let me tell you. I was like, I will try. <laughs> I turned like I was. A, I mean, it was nice down there. San Diego's different, but I'm like, oh, I can't keep up with this. I'm like, let's hurry this. Hurry this up. I, got, I love it. <laughs> No, it's it's also like it's just like you can't parent the next day either, you know? It's it's oh, the God. worst. Like well, parenting hungover is it's awful. It's you have the most awful. It's different for me. I, I don't cuz your kids are like can are older. Like my kids are on dinner. top of me like mommy, 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 mommy. How about we have a screaming match, mommy, and my head is like going to explode and I'm like stop. So when did online dating start? I never like when, even did. I didn't do online dating until a few years back. So did that start when, like, in college? I don't remember. I don't know when it started because obviously I was married for a long time. No, so. but, you know, I remember my mom online dating. Um, I want to say. Your mom did online dating? Yeah, back in the day. I want to say when we were still in high school. My mom was like, not online dating. There was online dating when we were in high school. Well, was it like Match.com? No, like it was dial like AOL. AOL. Yeah, they like used AOL. AOL. They had like yeah, they had like stuff in there. <laughs> oh, oh, that is like true. Facebook. And every gray hair on my face just came yeah. out somewhere. That's send an AOL instant message, and you do like ASL, right? Is that what yeah. you mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. No, nah, they would have like I think Match or E Harmony or one of those. E Harmony. I feel like I first heard of Match and E Harmony when I was in college at Westchester. Like I think one of my yeah, like I think I like two thousand and three. Yeah, that sounds about right. Four? Really? Yeah. God, I didn't hear about it until a year. Things out. Yeah. You have, you know, it's, 
can't, <laughs> well, can't pull devices or anything. <laughs> I'm going to ask my mom. No, ask your sure. mom what it's called. Yes. I bet it was AOL dating. <laughs> I'll be embarrassed if that's what it is. I want to believe that I my think, mom. Why be embarrassed? That's all that there was. You were in high school. So that sounds so like. Oh jeez. I just. All right. I would hope my mom would use a more premium account than that. <laughs> Match.com started April twenty first, nineteen ninety five. Whoa. Really? Wow. Well, I was eleven. I didn't know we had the internet then. I remember my mom. I remember having the computer in my room, and it was like dial up. Me, having to like use the computer, and I had to be like super stealth to make sure there was nothing that she could find on there. She was just gonna come pop in and use. The Were you going to like WhiteHouse.com? WhiteHouse.com exactly. <laughs> for homework. Mom, I love political science. Mom. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, Learn about the government. eHarmony, August twenty second, two thousand. So. <laughs> It's way it's way earlier than Oh my I god. I wouldn't need I guess because so many it didn't become mainstream until maybe we were in college. It became really yeah. I feel like it like took off a lot with I didn't well, even know about internet, it in college. When internet was fast enough. I mean, can you imagine how long it would no. take for a picture and a profile to load? <laughs> As someone oh that god. downloaded a lot of pictures, let me tell you. A long time. <laughs> Of the presidents? <laughs> yeah. The president. yeah. Yeah, I bet. Listen. And you guys want to meet my dog real quick, by the way? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. This oh, is Cass. Oh, yeah. hi. Say hi. What's up, buddy? Oh, I'm not saying hi. Yeah. I got uh, fancy ears. I know yeah, that dog. Yeah, we crimp his ears. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like, it looks like they're crimp. That, that's, uh, he's a golden retriever. Goldens are the best dogs. I know nothing about dogs. I I'm a hamster. What did you say, Kelly? I said I love that you know what crimping is. Yeah, well, who doesn't? Yeah. Kelly, uh, do you know the first person who crimped my hair was Miss? It was Joanne. Joanne, I don't doubt that at all. She was the first one who ever crimped my hair. That's Nicole Westerfer's mom. She crimped my hair, and I thought I was the coolest kid in the world. Well, Nicole Westerfer always had much crimped hair all the time yep. for a while. <laughs> She's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that <laughs> Kelly, that's your, that was like one of your best friends, right? Yeah, and I always say I'm surprised you never met her. We talked about that. I know. Yeah. I don't know if that made the final cut. You talked from. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you guys went yeah. to Temple together, and there's like yeah. a Scott Ritter connection and stuff. It's so weird. I went to well, camp with was, her. So, awesome. yeah. I, I'm kind of really because tomorrow first day of kindergarten i met nicole my first day of kindergarten wow. i met her too my, she was on my school bus i met her the first day of kindergarten yeah, too. And, like my son will never have that now oh yes go send him well, to her somebody house. on a zoom meeting because it's been like i said to some of you that were here before like i've it's been a year for the podcast and that's crazy and it's still doing so well yeah. Congrats. That was awesome. the last one to Barclays. Barclays, yeah. I haven't listened to that yet. That was a very different one for every. Oh my gosh, I it's cried, heavy. okay? I oh, I, yeah, I can't listen to that like now. five minutes I cried for her. Oh, it's shit, heavy. I know. That was I just weird. didn't expect it to go that way. And so, like, I was just like, oh, my God. Like, what? I, I didn't know what to do. Like, I was interviewing her or something. Like, it was horrible. Uh, <laughs> I, I just felt bad. Like, I just felt bad. Like, I just kept thinking, like, oh, my God. Did I did I hurt this girl in some way? Even though, like, I don't know. It was just I'm a whole. So glad I felt so bad. That. I'm so glad you said that because I feel like I felt the same exact way. And I was like, I wonder if everyone listening to this is thinking, because I think we all know that she had a really tough time, that she was very much picked That's on. what I said. I'm like, but I don't know if and I, you know, I actually I did it to her. Creek. I, I, I have to be on her band. She used to play the trombone, right? Yeah. I remember her in band. I, um, I, I don't I don't know if I knew her. I mean, but I left with the Hicken in the ninth grade. This was a situation where like this was from <laughs> kindergarten yeah. all the way through. And so um, like see, I didn't listen, I haven't heard just listening to her perspective just broke my heart. Like yeah. <laughs> But I wonder- I guess I, I witnessed what she was talking about and it just made me feel it's like are are any of us safe? Like I, I don't know. 
and because we were all kids and right, right. Yeah. I yeah, think we the whole time those. I was just like I hope that you know it's just yeah. crazy that it, I love these podcasts because we get to talk about these things and we get to bring these things to light um, I loved it I love the podcast because I think it's important <laughs> But mm-hmm. it was really difficult. It, it was yeah. definitely difficult. Really difficult. I forgot, actually, that she was friends with Amanda Ross and Emily Arnold. Oh, and my God. Thing, I, I didn't remember. I that, cannot I forgot that they were Amanda friends, Arnold but I think I knew that they were friends. But one thing I've that actually, I didn't talk about on my podcast was I was always fat, like, for forever since I was little, like, probably seven years old. And Emily Arnold and Amanda Ross said, we don't understand why Alicia's popular. She's fat like us, too. You did say that on your podcast. No, I don't think I did. I told you, you guys did. that. No. What? On your podcast. I didn't talk about it on my podcast. Did I, Brad? I don't think I did. I don't, yes, I don't, did. I don't remember hearing that. That might have been edited. No, and I was really, I was very upset because I was like, <laughs> that's not fair. Like, I'm... I know I'm big, like I get it, but you're ultimately bullying me now too. Because yeah, what and- people do when you bully people, it's because you feel a certain type of way about yourself, and then you put it out on other people because you don't like what something about you, and you're putting it out on others. And that yeah. that wasn't right of them to do to me. And yeah, totally. was not. And still, I'm 37, and I still remember that. Like, it's yeah. feelings. Like, Alicia's mm. met too, and she's popular. Like, we don't get it. Do okay. you think that it was more challenging in other high schools based on, like, like, when I went to college, like, my friends were definitely not as experienced. It didn't feel, at the time, like, Wissahickon was a very, like, brutal or ruthless type of experience and I don't know if that was just my like I had a that was just my personal view I'm curious I'm curious if you guys like think that's how it stacks up to other high schools I, from I mean, that standpoint I left I left Wissahickon in ninth grade not by choice um but more like because of how things were going for me in the school and my mom was going through a divorce so we were Like, I didn't have a choice. Heather stayed, um, and I had to go. So I, you know, was, like, terrified to leave. But at the same time, I was like, all right, well, maybe it'll be a fresh start to go to a different school and be around different people. Because, I mean, Wissahickon had its pros because, like, on one hand – we all knew each other. Like, even if we weren't Mm -hmm. friends, friends, Mm -hmm. like I remember being out and hanging out with every single one of you, even though we weren't Mm -hmm. like, like we didn't talk on the phone. We weren't like, Hey, what are you doing on Saturday? But we we all still knew one another. You know, we, our Mm -hmm. our groups, our circles came together. um, That had its pros and its cons. I feel like because, you know, everybody talked so much. And once one person said something, it just got around to everybody mm. and yeah, that was, that was it. It. game yeah. over. Like it doesn't matter where the truth started and where the lie ended. Like it just, it just no, kept it going and going and going. Um, so going mm. from like, what is the Hicken where they're like, we said there was what 350 kids or something like that in our graduating class. And I came up to North Penn, there's 1250 kids in my graduating class in North Penn. And that was like, holy shit. Yeah. But I think North Penn um, had a pretty big party, like rough party scene too. Just, it was different, like different than Wissahickon because Wissahickon, I think was pretty hardcore, but I mean, I correct me. I mean, I could be wrong in my opinion, but I feel like at the time when we were teenagers, it was kind of like party central everywhere. We were in, you know, one of the richest counties, the richest county maybe in Montgomery County. Um, So I think the drugs of choice were more readily available. We're more, and and also close to the city. Yeah, but, but yeah. Also, you can go in and get port. weed anytime. You're yeah. close to New York, close to a port. Close to New York to a port. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I and I think also, I think when you you know if you were to talk to your parents, they probably all, you know, my mom was a hippie, and I remember my mom. Me too. Me, yeah, I remember my mom. You know, my mom was a was a, a partier in high school, and she didn't go to college, but I know she she knows people that were partiers in college, and in every you know, TV show, movie, there's always people that are, you know, at different levels of partying than other people. And I think 
the same way we talked earlier about how there were some crews that just drank, right? There's also crews that did nothing at all. They, you know, hung out with their friends and they just did nothing. Went um, to the movies or went bowling or went to garden golf. <laughs> but like the stuff that like that I was hearing about were the things that I was hearing about from the college season. The things I was watching in the college seasons of nine hundred two and zero. You know, so that's what I like. I equate it with like the just that type of that party yeah. style of stuff that you know. So when we talk about when Leslie, you asked like, was it more advanced or it just seemed out of out of reach? I don't, you know, like. I don't, for for I think for people that didn't experience it, out of reach. And I think so when you talk about people that maybe you met in college or like when Tom talks about in college, I think those things were probably out of reach. But I'll bet there was some population in all those other kids' schools that were doing some of that, even if it was much smaller or their school population was so much bigger. It you wasn't didn't notice. Yeah. yeah. But what I – what I meant was like, was Wissahickon more brutal than other, like, I think Holly, like your point about having anonymity in North Penn makes a lot of sense, but like, yeah, was but Wissahickon it, more brutal from a like, yes. the way we treated H- each other standpoint? Hands down. Hands yeah. down. Yeah. My kids say that now. My kids used to go to Wissahickon and now um, they go to North Penn and they always tell me that like, it was so quickly, like, they told me they couldn't handle it. It was that bad. I feel like it's with the Hicken, there was no, like Still. there was no bounce back. Like if if uh-huh. somebody said something negative about you in Wissahickon, and you know it was like there was no bouncing back from that. There was no like recovering. At least in my experience, it was like okay, well once once certain things were said, that was it. Like I felt like I couldn't even walk into school like and look at anybody in the face because mm-hmm. I knew what I was going to be faced with, like whispering in the hallway or the snickering or the secrets or like nobody wanting to sit with me at lunch or like the people that did want to sit with me at lunch weren't doing it for a genuine reason. And like, God forbid, if I was ever even like seen talking to a guy, I must be sleeping with him. Like it was, it was literally hell and it, it, there was no coming back from it. So, and you know, like at a certain point, I think I touched on like, at, at the, some point I was just like, well, f- well, screw it. Like if people are going to think this of me, then, you know, fuck you. Like, what are you going to do? But, um, and that I think me. I miss a lot of that because I went to tech school and I, I think I miss like a lot of, I don't know. Did you have, did you? I don't remember that either, Danielle, at all. Don't remember ever feeling like, like you weren't part of everyone else like I felt like you were okay. like I never really looked at you as like those rumors like I don't really care even if that's you're not the, true, like you're still cool like that's I the the I, I, yeah, when I listened really to your podcast I thought that was more you than anything because I'm like I never really I don't know you know what I mean you know how like you think you think things and it might not be really like I guess it's about perspective because I felt the same way. I didn't, I didn't really think, I didn't look at you like that at all. Like, I, 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 you know what? I'll be honest. Like, I remembered that, Holly. I remembered that. And I, I remember not feeling that way about you. I remember thinking you were like smart and funny and liking you, but I do remember rumors. And I also like remember that thinking like that must have been hard for you to deal with and I remember ha- feeling like I needed to try to keep my name out of the rumor mill in high school oh yeah. like it was being afraid that people would yeah. be talking about like did I hook up with some guy on the weekend or did mm-hmm. I like, do, go to some party or whatever and, like, I do remember trying to keep my name out of the rumor mill and I do remember and you were like smart to do that because once it started it didn't stop and like it surprises me stop. to even hear anybody say that I'm over it now like I don't I don't give two shits yeah. like, over it now but it took a long time to get over it I didn't even feel yeah. like for a long time like I didn't even want to show, like show my face in Ambler like I just was even like walking through and I 
threw up in Ambler. Like that, it gave me anxiety. I was like, I don't even want to see these people. I don't know what anyone's thinking about, or you know. And that's crazy, but it all came from those experiences in high school. And I think that like, if you have a solid foundation and you have like a good group of friends to begin with and people know you, then, you know, that makes a big difference. I never, I don't, I never had that. I'm not, I don't, I didn't mean to say like the rumors weren't there. Like, Oh no, no, I know what you were, but I don't think that it ever changed, at least from my perspective, it didn't change my opinion about you. I didn't believe them or think that they were real. We all, really liked you and oh, always well, liked to me and you were always yeah. happy with me so I didn't think it bothered you that much which is why I probably didn't say anything to you like hey what's going on with the rumors why should I bring yeah. them up to you when you probably well, feel bad about them anyway and let me treat you like normal yeah, yeah. that's like an uncomfortable yeah I never knew you let were me not that talk affected about that by because yeah. she's a cool chick like I Thank like you her. you know like why Thanks. talk about that but I do remember, yeah, <laughs> cheers. But I remember them and I remember just thinking, I don't care. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter to me. She's still cool, you know? I, I wish I had known all of this <laughs> <in school. laughs> And now in hindsight, I should have said that to you. Like, we don't care whatever people I are mean, talking about. We were, we were kids, though, you know? know? Like, you don't know like, these things. And that's yeah, what we come out of the podcast. It's like, for people who are struggling, like Barclay or like Holly with the rumors, like, to reach out to them. Talk to them. Like, yes. ask them what's going on. Yes. That is so important. Yes. I mean, even now, like... I always tell people, please just, I, I don't do anything. I'm here. Call me. Uh -huh. I don't care what kind, I don't care if it's two o'clock in the morning. I'm probably up. If you need to talk, I mean, we really need to work on that. All of us. I mean, yeah. all of us as a people just reaching out to people. And that's another reason why I love this podcast because I think I, yep. it'll make it yeah. easier for us to do that. You know? Yeah. And that's funny that's enough. So for perspective too. It's I it's actually was, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, I think we're on a delay, guys. <laughs> I actually reached out to Rachel Kim, and I was like, oh, my God, we, we were, like, friends. And so her and I were supposed to hang out after her podcast, so because of all this and blah, blah, blah. So after her podcast, we were supposed to hang out right before the pandemic hit, literally um, a day or two. We've been, like, text. We were texting and whatever. And I'm like, this is what needs to come out of stuff like this. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Connected. We all need to still like reach out to each other and say like, "Hey, we were friends at one point. We could still chill and hang out. We're still friends." Like, yeah, I think out. it would be right. so cool once right. like once totally. all this is over to like even if we just run out like a banquet hall yeah. or go Delilah's. like go down go Delilah's. down the we're going to Delilah's thing. Thing. <laughs> Hi, JP. That sounds like a good time, Mike. They all <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was gonna ask about you if you were um, if you were gonna make it on because I know you've been distant on um, social media. So, mm -hmm. yes. Oh yeah, yeah. You're wise to do that. Social media is draining. Oh, no, honestly, it's awful. For for that, it was like absolutely like, terrible. I realized that I was like kind of being about activism, but not being about activism. So I decided to just start doing activism instead mm -hmm. of just yelling at people online so that it, yeah i feel better about that it's a lot more fulfilling yeah mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. absolutely yeah how is everybody Definitely. it's good to see you all good to see you good to see you hi mike hi lay how are your babies <laughs> they're good they're still awake it's yeah, good day today um yeah it's Holly's son <laughs> Yeah, mine's still My awake too. Have, in and out too. Like poor Heather is upstairs trying to get him to sleep, and I am I'm waiting for like the the knock on the door to be like, get back in here, go put him to bed. <laughs> They, uh, oh. Yeah, we, we have a leak in my upstairs bathroom. So right now I have. Yep, I'm being back bathroom. at you guys. I'm sorry, I have to cut out. Alrighty, oh, bye, bye, Holly. Bye, Holly. Bye. 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 Don't you think that Brad needs a podcast? Brad should have one, like where somebody asks him questions mm -hmm. about himself. Oh, oh. Like, see, here's the problem. Oh, see, I think we all should do that. It should be like a culmination of all of us, and then you just like a firing squad, right? Yeah. Let's ask. Yeah, I, Brad I questions. kill them on the regular. Like I kill them, like in questions. <laughs> GP, you got brought up uh, at the end of someone. God, who was it? I just did uh, Tom Beals. 
Uh, oh boy. <laughs> And, uh, I forgot about that dude completely. I forgot about Kim Burkowski until she was mentioned at the end. Oh, I didn't to talk about that, she Alicia. Her whole goddamn life out. Oh, no, Facebook. did she talk bad about me? Mm, Got to talk about it with you. You want to do it publicly? <laughs> Are you gonna? Yeah, you can talk about it publicly. That's okay. So Kim, uh, talk. It's funny because when you talked about Emily and Amanda saying why is Alicia popular. Kim talked about kind of the sentiment of looking at you from afar and wanting to be you and be in your position. Because I was fat. Yeah, she wanted to. That's exactly what Emily and Amanda were saying. We don't get why Alicia was popular because she was fat too. But has a memory of you saying to her that she will never be popular. I said that. That's what she. Ooh. That's what, that's like a very clear memory that she has of you. So I was a bully. Okay, I want to see the receipts. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I mean, uh, uh, honestly, like I was a bitch a lot of the time too. So like I'm, mm, I'm or maybe I said that in retaliation because these people who also made fun of me. I was made fun of since I was very young. Like I got made fun of on the school bus by the Santangelo brothers. They lived down, I don't know if anybody remembers. Oh, I remember the Santangelos. They were sexy as hell, but they made, they called me. No, they weren't. They they were kind of (laughs) hot. They were kind of hot. But they made fun of me and my sister and I got made fun of like Uh. a lot of the time. So I think that it's hard because I said earlier, a lot of the times bullying comes from where you don't feel okay about yourself. And it was hard for me to be in quote unquote, a popular group being fat. That was not easy for me. It was always hard. None of the boys liked me. Like I was big, I wasn't attractive and that was hard. So I'm sure like, I probably said something like that. I don't remember it. Like I would like the receipts, but I don't like, Put it past. If she remembers that, she remembers that. Well, you know. Put it this way. Here's a positive flip. That they, they were, you know, I was fat and they didn't want to be me. (laughs) They weren't me and me. So, um, yeah. Well, you know, like that's why when you were telling the story of Amanda and and Emily and how clearly you remember, you said like, I remember. I remember it like. That's how Kim tells that's like, she remembers like. You know, other things like, no, that specifically, that story, I remember it. But you will never I, be popular. That's exactly <laughs> it. But I, t- you know, I not stuck up for you. I don't want to say stuck up for you because I don't want to, I don't want to discount her memory and her feeling. But you but, are my best friend. But what I did <laughs> say was that knowing you as I feel like I know you now, I feel like you would own the memory and say, that you're such a, that you're not that person anymore. And she honestly looks forward to possibly talking to you about being the fat girls in high school. She could definitely talk to me anytime. Reach out. Like I am, I was supposed to hang out with Rachel Kim. I'll hang out with whoever. Like I'm totally down. But so yeah, I'm like actually... I said, like I'm, I wouldn't put it past me. I was a bitch. Like I would not put it past me. But I have a memory of you though. I always thought you were nice. Oh, thanks, Kenya. Oh, yeah, I see. thought you were a bitch, but I right. loved you for it. <laughs> right. I'm sure well, like, a lot of people would say I was a bitch. I was a bitch, too. Like, but it's like one thing. I, I do remember Scott Jordan because Scott Jordan lived right next door to Rachel Moydell. And I was always at Rachel's house. And we would see him at her house because they were neighbors. But anyway, I just wanted to say that. I mean, if we're being honest, I was a bitch, but in a completely different way than you guys are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were. Yeah, hey, I just want to know one, pal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a defense mechanism. Like, everybody's trying to, like, cope with defense their shit themselves. the best way they can. Absolutely. And I'm sure I was, too. I was defending my spot in being the fat girl in the popular group. There could only be one. There can't be that many. Well, isn't that funny? Because I compared, I compared her feeling of that to me, to my like uh, animosity towards like Eric and Jean and other light skinned people. In- What's up, Tom? The biracial. Oh, in the interesting. Popular- like, yep. why is he the one that everyone likes? Why did everyone? That's hate so him? interesting. That's why all the fat people hated me because I was the cool fat girl. I wanted Thank to maybe you. even think like Thank you, that Danielle. group. 
I, I, I was so just in silence. <laughs> yeah, but Brad, I, I legit didn't even know you were biracial until like way too late. <laughs> Wait, but I always thought I was black. I was like, yeah, he's a black kid. Was I like, hey, he's a black kid. It's fine. My I hair always was so fluffy. You were half Jewish. I mean, you're, you're, you weren't you were as chocolate as me, but you know, you're I knew because I knew I would see your mom, so right. I knew. Right, all the Halloween, all the Halloween parades. Yeah. Hi, Tom. What's up, Tom? What's up, Tom? What's up, Tom? What's up y'all? Hi, neighbor. Oh, <laughs> wait, Leslie, tell your story. Tom, my parents are selling their house on Claudia Way. Oh, really? I didn't even know they were still there. I thought they moved They're away. They're still there. They're putting it on the market. Oh, cool. And we used to put dog chip bags on her front door. Oh, my God. Tom, I felt like I didn't get enough play in your podcast for as much as we hung out. <laughs> Tom, how are you? I'm good. How are y'all doing? Good. 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 All right. Actually, I'm lying. I'm shit today. I mean, it's been an awful day. I've cleaned up a lot of pee off of my floor today, so I'm drinking a lot of rosé. Ooh, nice. Me too. Kids I are animals. a whole freaking dog cage full of piss and shit. What, wait, was, was it kids or animals? animals? Mine was kids. Oh, Mine yeah. was dog. <laughs> I, we started potty training today, so. Yeah, I think we're about to do that with my youngest, and I'm not looking forward to it because I hated it with my oldest. It's worth it now because I don't have to change poopy diapers for him. But the uh, I'm not I'm not excited about the. How that. old is your youngest? It's two, just turned Aww, two. Oh, he's a baby. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. adorable, but he's also the devil. Wait, um, is that David that we just met? David, he's my oldest. He's oh. he's gonna be five in like a month. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He's awesome. He's uh, it's the the pride of my absolute life. So smart, like he can read and write and do math and know science. Like, wow. Couldn't brag enough about that kid, but he also uh, makes me crazy. So, you know, it's not the best all the time. My mom says smart kids are challenging kids. Yeah, I actually. Uh, <laughs> So I got these like foam swords and shields so uh, I can fight him when he, you know, steps over a line a little bit and not feel like a bad parent. <laughs> it's awesome. It's just so, it's just good. It's great. It's just it's seeing like parents beaming about their kids. I don't know. It's just, yeah. sorry. No, it's, it's fun, man. Yeah, my mom's still doing it. <laughs> and will forever. <laughs> My mom did it too. She just the flowers I got her. <laughs> oh, that's nice. It's funny. Like I, I don't know your uh I don't know your guys' moms. Um, but Danielle, I know oh, I was gonna say. Yeah, no, Danielle, I know your and I do feel like the vibe is so fucking similar of and maybe it's because we're both single, but I just feel like our moms are just the complete, you know, it's a third arm onto our lives. <laughs> Well, now that I'm not an ambler anymore, you know, it's, she's not too happy with me because, you know, we can't just walk down to the lucky well together or whatever, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, we can meet, let's get back halfway, something, I don't know. That was my mom. Where are you now, Danielle? I'm in Collegeville. Oh, nice. oh okay. So you're not, still not too far, but not. Yo, ambler's yeah. gotten so fancy. Where is it? Oh, it's totally bougie. It's so nice. Mm -hmm. I love that. Like, I'm like kind of in Hickville, like, you know, there's um, oh, not horse farms and there's, you know, whatever. But then there's also like the shopping mecca up the street. So, yeah. Yeah. Staying as far away from Hickville as possible right now. Ain't, Where are you, Mike? The point. I'm in Glenside. Oh, I love Glenside. Oh, Glenside I lived in nice. Jenkintown for three years. I was in Jenkintown too. Where? In the colonnade on Old York Road. So I lived on Cotton and Ave right behind Buckets. Do you know where yes. Buckets is? Yeah. Yes, Buckets in the Drake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That, that was I, used, I went on a couple dates to the Drake, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. With Manoli or someone else? No, with other people. Uh, pretty nice. It's a nice area. It um, is a nice area. I loved it, but it, it was expensive. It is. It's very mm -hmm. expensive. Um, Glenside is great. It's quiet. Um, I love my neighborhood. It's a, Are they it's a very diverse school? neighborhood. Abington cool. School District? No, unfortunately, it's like two blocks off, so we're in Cheltenham. Oh, okay. Um, 
the property tax here suck. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I feel Adulting. like that's the whole area. The whole area is just getting completely priced out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wait, and do you live in right now, though? <laughs> do you live in Lancaster? Yeah, Lancaster City. Oh, okay. My sister lives in Lancaster City. She loves oh, really? it. Yeah, yeah. It's, for a while. It's great. I love it. It's it's similar enough to Ambler, but still not Ambler, which is yeah. kind of great. <laughs> it's small. Yeah. Yeah, it's a small city. Where are you, Tom? I'm in Chicago. Chi-town. <laughs> okay, what part of town <laughs> are you in? I live, we live on the north side. The, the neighborhood's called Uptown. I'm like. Okay. I'm Dude, like, Chicago's awesome. I, I have a lot. I've never been. There. Go. Oh, Whoa. it's amazing. The winters suck, but the summers are the best. Uh, so I've just started watching Shameless. I'm on like season seven now. And I'm I like, I that. have to go to Chicago Southside. Like, I want to be gangster like them. Do you think you'll stick around, Tom? Uh, I think so. We bought a house here like uh, almost five years ago. And I, I've been here for seven years. It doesn't feel like it's been that long. Oh, wow. I can't. I didn't realize it was that long. I know. I haven't lived in Pennsylvania since oh nine. Yeah. Because I, I spent we spent right. some time in California and then came out here. And Italy. You know, my mom's from Chicago, <laughs> so like we still have a lot of family there. But oh, really? I have a lot of friends who've ended up. They love it. Yeah, my mom grew up on the south side, but um, she so like all her family are in the northern, like all the Jewish suburbs, basically to the north. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I forget what comedian right said it, but they were like, Leslie. buy your coat for Chicago in Chicago. Yeah. Where it's gonna, that wind is going to disrespect your coat. <laughs> <laughs> I've only had two bad years like that here, but when it's bad, it's bad. I mean, they, I don't know, three years ago, they close all the schools. It's like they don't want kids even outside. Oof. We had Oof. several negative 20 degree days without the wind. No, thank you. So. <laughs> no. I'm good. Alicia, what did you say about Italy? Tom was there for a while. I listened to his podcast not that long. Oh, ago. I didn't get there yet. <laughs> I was super behind. Yeah. I've I've really been doing a good job of catching up on everybody's, and I'm totally uh, like caught up. I'm well, so so far behind. Right Look what you've done, Brad. I'm a Look stalker. I listen to <laughs> podcasts when I cook and when Leslie's I run. Really so. good. But you I'm know, on your it. crew. A lot of credit. But your crew has like a has an ongoing chat group where you, you like you got to be up on it to talk about it. So Heather was on it, like talking about everyone's like immediately. Yeah. Like oh god. Heather and I will spoil it for you if you don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> And then, like, Brooke doesn't answer. Colleen sometimes chimes in. Colleen listens pretty religiously, I think. She's very good. Colleen's very good. Um, yeah, so we all, like, talk about it. <laughs> like, you're pretty good. You're pretty quick with the listens. I, hear, I usually hear from you uh, pretty quick. I try to. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Not, um, so I was late I, on. I drive for a living, so... As soon as your episodes drop, I basically download it and play it right away. Nice. Like, I just, I listen to so much stuff that it's just like, all right, I need more stuff to keep me going. Because I can't listen to the radio anymore. I just can't do it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, I listen, I listen often. And yeah, I do text you a lot. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I listen, I listen on my drives into Philly every week. Oh, that's good. That's probably a really far drive from Lancaster to Philly. Hour and 15 Pretty minutes. Hour. Yeah. So you're one yeah. of the few people, Jim, that still has a drive. Most yeah. people just don't like, I know like Kelly Brook and like so many people now like don't have a drive anymore. So they don't get that time to listen to it. Tom, I know you used to, you were listening when you're riding your bike. Yeah. Yeah, I still do. But it's only like a 20 minute ride. So it takes me like five days to <laughs> make it longer. The more we drink, the longer they get. Yeah. I feel I'm, like I got gypped, Brad, because I was, what, like 40 minutes? <laughs> Susie, Susie you Mollick gotta just the drink thing. two bottles of wine and you'll have a really long podcast. <laughs> yeah, it depends on what's happening. I mean, I like. Mine was like right after my business closed for COVID. So I was like, let's get hammered. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry, Tom. Yeah, that can sucks. We talk about, it sounded it like now? it was cool as shit too. Uh, we're o- Yeah, we're open. I mean, we're doing like carry out and delivery. So it's like 
fine, but there's no real end in sight as to when we can have people eat inside. So yeah. it's like, you know, it's okay. It's not great. We're doing doing better than many people and worse than some, I'd say. Yeah. Does your your wife work at a different restaurant? Is that right? She actually was working at a bed and breakfast doing all the cooking there and that's like has no timeline for reopening as far as serving food. So um she's at home right now. Look, I never take for granted how lucky I am. I, I've been working this entire time. Um, and I look I, I deliver groceries, so like I'm just constantly working and uh I, I know a lot of people don't. Um so I mean, obviously, I hope everybody's doing well. With JP, JP just went awesome. back, right? Huh? Uh, yeah, we we went we opened uh, four weeks ago now. Hmm. Back to doing shows. We had a three week delay. We were going to open, and then the governor came out with new stuff, and we had to put a pause on it again. It really sucked. We thought that was the end, uh, but we got back. What's the response like with like audience? Like, really good. I mean, the good thing is people are looking for something to do. Um, but you know, it's a whole process because we're enforcing a mask policy in the theater. Uh, we we do a health screening when they walk in. Every single person gets temp checked. The staff gets temp checked. The uh, cast gets temp checked. So you're talking 150 to 200 people a day going through wow. a temperature check before they can be in the theater. It's so weird. I have to do that at work too. It's yeah. like there, there's a whole checklist everybody has to go through before they can sit down at the restaurant. So Yeah. And yeah, they made me the, the pandemic safety officer for the theater. So I was in charge of creating all the procedures and traffic flow and all that crap. It was crazy. 